Welcome back to Hasbro Side. Haven't done an Anil EZ video in a while, so I thought I'd do one since I'm doing a new caliber. Um, well, not new to many, but new to me. I haven't loaded for it, and I'm loading for a friend for this, and that's 300 blackout. And so these are all formed 223 cases. Uh, they've been trimmed, you know, cut off, and then sized into blackout, and then trimmed again. But they haven't been annealed since then. So what I've done is I've set up the machine to the uh, rough same setting as 308 brass. Um, because the 223 is a smaller neck and all, so we're going faster typically with it, less surface area. Here we have to heat more surface area in the Revolution, so it takes a little more time. So I've slowed down the Anil EZ speed here, and we're going to go ahead and run through one case with Temple X 650. Uh, Checking, temperature checking fluid on it. And we'll just do a double check and see how it looks when that comes off. I've already done a few cases. They visually look good, but let's double check with uh, with this uh, Tempelac fluid. So we'll get our torch going and we'll see how we do. Well, you can see here, I um, automatically have to adjust something because the cases are not falling properly. So we'll do that, and we'll come right back. All right, reset our uh, deflector here to hold this thing in the right position, and now we're running uh, our Tempelac test again. So that will come through as normal, and we'll just continue to let these run because I know it's already pretty close. We'll fish this thing out of here and take a look. So if you see here, where it stops changing color is where... Um, we've reached 650 degrees. So the top is much hotter and we're annealing it. The bottom where we're hitting 650, we're really not quite annealing it. And so that's a pretty good transition. And you see the color of the case. I'll fix one of those out here in just a second too. Well, actually you can see one up here. The color of the transition of the case, this one won't be quite so hot, is right about here. So just down below the shoulder a little bit, but not too far down. And so that's pretty good. You can see that. So I think our speed is okay. If anything, I could probably speed it up just a little bit. We'll go up to 45 and just uh, bring that line up just slightly and uh, go ahead and run these. And we have 300 <laughs> of these cases to run through. So we'll skip ahead in the video here in just a few minutes. Um, but I thought I might like to see that for setting up um, setting up 300 blackout. Now, this is also the same machine we have the uh, Anil EZ counter. Here's a problem though. This is the small wheel setup and, oh crap, hang on. What I was, what I was about to say is, uh, with this small wheel, these bigger cases are conducting a lot of heat back to that wheel. Now I have that torch pointed as much as I can back away from these cases. But if you look, you can see right here, the entrance of this uh, Anil EZ wheel, that in fact, it, um, it has melted the face of that wheel just a little bit. So that's not good. Um, I'll have to probably either repair or replace this wheel. So that's that's gonna have to be improved. But it's just a function of this, this kind of a design. In the end, I may put a spacer behind the wheel to push everything out and get, it, get the case and everything away from uh, that wheel just a little bit more. Because there's only so much you can do to control this heat other than forcing it away. Um, probably a better idea that I, I just haven't found the right torch yet is to get a pencil torch to where you can get a smaller tip flame right up against this thing and angle it back in and you know bend the tip tube a little bit uh, with a tubing bender. So I'm going to look into that and if I get that um, to work well as I think it should then I'll um, post that as well. But anyway here are 300 blackout. There's definitely a limit though because uh, it's getting pretty hot and we're heating our wheels. Um, so maybe we can speed up just a little bit more. We'll go up to 50 and maybe that'll conduct a little bit, a little bit less heat then to the wheel. I think our annealing will still be fine from the coloration that I see here. So um, we'll jump ahead to the end once this is done.
right, we're almost down uh, to our last, well, we're down to our last few, almost through 300 cases of um, 300 blackout. Now, it's not been that long. Um, count the actual time here, but it's, oh, it's less than 15 minutes uh, total time to anneal all these. And that's just, just anneal easy. is just a beautiful machine when it comes to that. Um, and everything is so consistent, case after case after case. It just is a simple system, but really well designed and thought out. So uh, with these last few finish up, then we're going to look up here at our uh, cases for comparison to see how we did and sort of see how the Temple Act shows and then versus the ending annealing setting that we use. Um, so we're just about done, and then we'll zoom in here. All right, here we have our cases lined up to sort of see how we did. This is where we started. And so this is the Temple Act setting. And as I say, with this 650, you'll find that the annealing line, this is where it stops, you know, 650 or above from here on. But the annealing, at least by discoloration or oxidation, is actually just slightly above that, maybe about a millimeter above that. And so you can see then this case is one that ran through at the same settings. So I slowed, I actually sped the wheel up a little bit just so, I mean, this is okay, but I'd rather just anneal a little bit farther up. And so now you see we moved from 40% to 50% on the speed percentage here on the anneal EZ. And now our line is right there. And so that's not bad. Uh, it, there's not a there's not a lot, of, a lot of work going on into the brass when we fire 300 blackout just because the shoulder is very small. Um, and there's just not a lot of work in that um, shoulder area. And the neck a little bit more perhaps, but the shoulder is not so bad. So you don't have to, I don't believe you have to kneel quite as far down. But anyway, so we're certainly a kneel down past our shoulder and just at the top of the case. Um, so pretty good. And so this is where we ran um, maybe 290 of the 300 through is right there. The others are right here. Um, then, you know, when we buy bulk brass, it's really hard to find blackout brass now. Um, and so I found a source that was doing bulk brass and it said mixed head stamps and blah, blah, blah. It ends up being they sent me formed 223 brass. Uh, 556 and 223 breaths. So uh, that's fine. That's why I went ahead, and since it had been formed, went ahead and wanted to anneal it. Um, but there's just one case there I thought was really particular. I had a really dark color, strange color to the brass. And all these have been cleaned really nice. I mean, the company that sent it to them, uh, they, they had cleaned them really well. And this one case is a bit different discoloration. So since we have so many, I'm just going to call that one out. Uh, I don't think it's brass. Um, magnet didn't seem to indicate, I mean, steel. Magnet didn't indicate so. But uh, nonetheless, it's just enough difference than all the rest of the brass you know, it's a good reason to throw it out. So anyway, I thought you might like to see this. Uh, so a little bit of annealing now with the 300 blackout. I doubt this brass gets worked very much, but you know, so I would suspect four or five firings down the road it might anneal it again. Um, it's not like the ones that have, you know, cases we have really heavy shoulders or large shoulders and necking down, much like shown up here in this one, um, where, you, where your brass gets a lot of work. So um, there you have it. 300 blackout on the Neil Easy.